Hello, hello! We're going to look at another cookbook that I picked up at the library. This one is really special. It's super cute. I'm so glad I checked it out at the Parentsville Library. And I decided to go ahead and make a soup out of it because it is cold in Tennessee right now and hot soup sounds really good. But I'm also going to make some interesting spoon bread to go along with it. Now, here's the cookbook in question. I'm assuming the dust jacket is probably missing and has been missing for a long time, but this is the Early American Cookbook. Now, I picked it up because of the name. It looked like it was gonna have some historical recipes in it, and my instincts were right because we're actually looking at food and cooking in colonial America. Now, I thought we would make this little chicken chowder right here for two reasons. Number one, chowder apparently was extremely popular. As you can see, there's a ton of them in here. Um, was extremely popular in early America. And I also happen to have a rotisserie chicken that I need to turn into something else. Uh, this is perfect for leftovers and perfect to be put into a soup. I've also got everything out I'm going to need for the spoon bread, which is nothing like the spoon bread that I uh, have shown on this channel before, but it called for water ground cornmeal. And guess what I have? I just so happen to have some water ground cornmeal from the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It's a historic mill there. Um, I do have a video on the channel about where this is in the Smoky Mountain National Park and what it looks like. We bought the flower there while uh, doing that video and it was just a really fun time. If you're ever in the area, I highly suggest going there. You will not regret it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get, actually, let's go ahead and start on our cornmeal because we actually need to let this set aside for just a short amount of time um, until it comes, you know, to kind of room temperature. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we're going to start on the rest of this soup. All right, now I've got the cornmeal and salt mixed together in this bowl. I've also heated some water. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the two cups. And now we're just gonna mix this together. We're gonna set it aside and let it cool a little bit before we add the rest of our ingredients. And now I'm going to fill the teapot back up, put it back on the stove, because we need two more cups of hot water for the soup. All right, I've got lots done. I don't have any chicken fat, so I've gone ahead and used Crisco, and I have melted that in our soup pot, so we are more than ready to put our celery and onion in there. We're gonna let that soften a little bit, then we will put in our two cups of hot water that I've had uh, steaming over here for a while now. And along with these two cups of hot water is going to go our potatoes. This already smells so good. There's something about onion and celery and so many good things boiling in a pot that really fills your kitchen with such a homey, comforting smell. I cannot wait to try this. Now we're gonna let these vegetables get soft for about 30 minutes, and then we will add the rest of our ingredients. And now while we wait for our vegetables to get soft in the soup, let's go ahead and finish the rest of this cornbread. Now I've got my milk here. I'm going to add that in. And yes, I did have to switch to a larger bowl because I realized uh, that I was going to need more mixing room than what I was giving myself. 
And before I started this, I went ahead and put the five tablespoons of butter into the baking dish, pop that in the oven because we want the dish to be hot and we want that butter melted. Now we're gonna add our four eggs and go ahead and beat that until smooth. And that's it, simple ingredients, really easy to put together. I'm gonna go ahead and check to see if that butter is melted and that dish is hot, and then we'll be able to pour this in, pop it in the oven, and start work on our soup again. Ooh, just listen to that sizzle. We are ready to pour our batter in and get this in the oven. That is a lot of butter, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and mix this together, pop it in the oven, then we will see where we are at our soup, and hopefully we'll be ready for some taste testing very soon. Now let's talk about what I really enjoyed about this little cookbook. I actually don't have any cons to this cookbook, um, just because I think it's really well done, um, but it's just one of those nice little historical cookbooks that you kind of know what you're getting into when you, you know, buy it, and I think it really fits the bill. So this was printed in 1974, which you can see from the illustrations, they have that really great 1970s look to them that I absolutely love. I think the illustrations are really what makes this little cookbook, and it really just elevates this cookbook to exactly what you want it to be. I also enjoyed the type of paper that they used to print this cookbook on. It's got a speckled look to it or a mild tea stained look to it to give it that kind of older look and I think it really worked well with this. Now I really enjoyed the introduction in the front that goes into the food and cooking in Colonial America. I thought they did a really good job with laying out exactly what kind of cooking was done in that era and kind of the history that goes with it and also the whys of why they cooked the way they did in early America. And they make a good point that when Europeans first came over to America, they had to make a lot of changes given how different things grew here and some of the things that they'd had in Europe wouldn't grow here and the fact that they now had access to new foods that they'd never had before. Also add to the fact that it was just a lot harder. You're starting from scratch in this country, which means you're probably cooking over an open fire with very limited amounts of utensils and pots. So the type of cooking that was developed in America has a very interesting history and in that it was born out of necessity. I also really enjoyed the overall variety of recipes. This isn't a very large book, but you're actually getting quite a few recipes and all of them sound really interesting. And I like the fact that they wrote them in such a way as to make them accessible to the home cook while keeping them historically accurate. So overall, would I add this cookbook to my collection? Absolutely. And I probably will start looking for this on eBay just so I can get my hands on it. And now let's go ahead and get back to our soup and see if it's finally done so we can finally eat. We are ready for the last steps of this soup. This has been coming along so nice and easy. We're already almost ready to eat. Our vegetables are nice and tender, so we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken. I've had my milk sitting here getting nice and hot. That is ready to add to our soup. We're gonna give this a nice stir together. It already looks and smells wonderful. I've already mixed up the flour with some cold water to make a paste. So that will go in here to thicken this up. 
All right, I've got the paste in there. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that really good. All we need to do now is season it with salt and pepper. I'm gonna let this simmer just for a little bit just to get nice and uh, a little bit more thick with that flour I added. Go ahead and season it and we should be ready. Now the cornbread needs probably a little bit longer. So I'm gonna let that go just for a little bit more and then we can do our taste test. I think we are ready. Oh my gosh, that cooked up to a beautiful golden brown. I can't wait to try that because it smells so good and of course, buttery. <laughs> and the soup is also looking really good. We are ready to try this. So let's go ahead and plate up and see if it's a recipe that should have stayed in the 1700s or something we should be making today. All right, I've got a little bowl. I'm just gonna eat a little bit for now if I can. I'm trying to wait until Mitch has his lunch break so he can come out and we can eat together. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stop myself, but <laughs> the smell is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. This soup is so perfect in so many different ways. I can't hardly stop eating it um, to be able to talk about how much I really, really enjoyed this soup. It's just got the perfect amount and combination of ingredients. Now, of course, you could add more if you've got carrots or something like that, but I don't think that it needs that. It is perfect exactly the way it is. It is so just comforting and tasty and just, well, perfect. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> On a cold day, this is just such a welcoming bowl of soup. I'm so glad that I tried this out of that cookbook because this is something that I will definitely be making again. Now, as far as the spoon bread, now I've made spoon bread rolls. That is something completely different. Spoon bread, uh, traditional spoon bread is actually supposed to be a little bit more mushy, kind of like a Yorkshire pudding or a souffle. I don't know if you can see the texture on there, but you see it's got a lot of mush to it. So let's go ahead and try that. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm. That is so good. Oh my gosh, the butter is really what makes that. <laughs> it has a really good cornmeal taste to it. If you wanted to just add this to your soup and eat both of them together, I think that would actually be really good. Now, as far as this cookbook, you've heard my review, so you know that I already really like this. I will say that if you find this used somewhere, I would definitely go ahead and give this a pickup because that's exactly what I'm going to do. It gave us two really, really good recipes. If that's any indication of the rest of them, then this cookbook is gonna be filled with wonderful food. So there you go, another soup for supper and another really good cookbook that we picked up from a library. So you never know what your library is gonna have and it's always a good thing to go in there and check it out because they always add new books. And so you never know what kind of new cookbooks are going to be offered. So thanks for watching this episode. Hope you stay tuned for next time and we'll see you then, bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.